Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Department of Health is observing the health conditions of two individuals after being exposed to a poultry farm in San Luis, Pampanga. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Department of Health or DOH says flu-like symptoms from two of the 20 farm workers in a poultry farm in Pampanga. This was after they were taken swab samples and underwent blood tests. The DOH says one of them is having a fever and the other is having coughs after being exposed to chickens infected with the avian flu. The DOH will know the results of the examination on the two individuals tomorrow if they are indeed infected with the virus. Yung suspect case, sinintay pa natin yung resulta na baka makuha na namin bukas kasi 48 hours. The health department conducted contact tracing of people who had been exposed to chickens with bird flu. However, health officials clarify that an individual suspected with avian flu cannot transfer the virus to other humans. The DOH also emphasized the possible transmission of avian flu is chicken to humans and not humans to humans. Health authorities also allay public fears, noting that the avian flu is not airborne. Cause of alarm siya sa mga manok. Kasi ngayon nga, it's an animal health problem. Kasi nga yung bird flu virus will infect feathered animals and manok, yung poultry. Sa public health, hindi pa. The DOH is aware that many are panicking because of the avian flu. That's why it is reminding the public to listen to official statements only regarding the said virus. Kung ano-ano mga larawan ang pinapakita sa social media na may bukol-bukol na ganito, kaya natatakot ulit yung mga tao. Ang pwede lang pong mahawa ay kung kayo'y nasa San Luis. The health department assures it is ready to help in the treatment of people infected with avian flu. DOH has prepared flu vaccine to prevent any strain of the virus that can mutate in the body of humans. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The trade of broiler producers slows down in some parts of Luzon days after the bird flu outbreak in the country. Clay Pelayo will tell us why. The United Broiler Racers Association, or UBRA, already feels the impact of the bird flu outbreak in San Luis, Pampanga. They say that even if the ones affected by the virus are the egg layers, the sales of chicken meat in the market have also taken a slump. UBRA says the producer's sales in the province of Tarlac has reduced by 50%, 40% in Pampanga, and 20-30% to in southern Tagalog and Rizal. Farm gate price has also gone down to 62 to 69 pesos from 65 to 70 before the announcement of the outbreak last week. The group says their cost of production is around 70 to 75 pesos per kilo. Na delay yung pagtapos ng ani ng manok na hihirapan din sa farm kasi madadagdagan yung patoka, madadagdagan yung mamamatay, madadagdagan yung kumbaga yung efficiency is apektado. Ubra appeals to the Department of Agriculture to remove the transport ban of broilers out of Luzon because it causes confusion to buyers. Ang sinasabi ng lahat ay lahat ng poultry products na nasa labas ng area na yon ay ligtas. Bakit hindi makapunta yung mga products na yon sa Visayas, Mindanao? Prior to this, the DA appealed for farmers' understanding that although they will suffer loss with the implementation of quarantine procedures, the said measure will ensure that the virus will not spread. Maski isang milyong it's look back, that is nothing compared to the whole poultry industry of the country na masisira kapag pinabayaan natin ito. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Agriculture Region 5 sets up quarantine stations in five of its entry points. Meanwhile, poultry farms in Batangas continues to implement preventive measures. Rajel Adora tells us why. Poultry farms owners in San Jose, Batangas worry over the possible decline in the prices of eggs. This is due to the effect of the bird flu virus outbreak in San Luis, Pampanga. San Jose, Batangas has been declared as the egg basket of the Philippines. It produces more than 7 million eggs every day from the 350 chicken farms. 
This prompted farm owners to implement stricter preventive measures to prevent the spread of the avian flu virus in their farms. Inaalaga namin sa Bombay, may spray namin ng disinfecta. Kasi pag hindi namin spray yun, siyempre mapapasok yung mikrobyo, yung virus. Bawat dumating na sa sakyan, i-de-disinfecta natin. Kahit ano man yan, basta't galing sa labas, de-disinfecta yun. Disinfecta. Kaya meron kami dyan sa gate. Meanwhile, the Negros Occidental Provincial Veterinary Office strictly prohibits the entry of chickens from Luzon. The province has already set up quarantine stations at ports and airports to ensure that the virus won't spread there. Wala kita dapat kabalakan because ang Negros Occidental is avian flu free. A livestock inspector also monitored 24-7 all poultry farms in the area. Local agencies assured that amid the outbreak, the province will not run out of chicken supply. Meanwhile, the Department of Agriculture Region 5 has also set up quarantine stations and checkpoints in Barangay Tabugon, Santa Elena, Camarines Norte and at the Matnog Port Sorsogon to monitor the chicken meats being delivered in the said region. Region 5 is one of the entry points of trade going to Visayas and Mindanao. The DA says all dressed chicken meats will be inspected and undergo the process set up by the National Meat Inspection Service. The DA confirms that the chickens being sold in the market now in Bicol region are safe for consumption. Rajela Dora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, the Malacanang orders the Department of Agriculture and the Bureau of Animal Industry to expedite measures that will clear the country of its first avian flu outbreak that they found and confirmed in Pampanga. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Ernesto Abella says personnel from the armed forces of the Philippines may help in eradicating all fowls that they suspect to have been affected by the virus. And other sectors in the poultry industry which are burdened by the drastic measures needed to contain and eradicate our first ever avian flu outbreak. Despite their lack of personnel, we urge DA and BAI to expedite the virus clearing, to minimize the losses and hasten the recovery of the poultry industry. Perhaps if needed, the AFP can field more men to call birds. This is, after all, no small calamity. The Department of Agriculture allocates more than 50 million pesos as compensation to poultry raisers affected by the avian flu virus outbreak in Pampanga. Victor Cosare explains why. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Pinol talked to farm owners and poultry raisers in the town of San Luis in Pampanga affected by the avian influenza virus. They complain being in a difficult situation and are now seeking help from the government to immediately resolve the problem. As compensation, the government will pay the owners 80 pesos for every chicken that will be called, while 10 pesos for every egg. Aside from this, DA also opened a loan program where poultry farm owners can borrow money up to 25,000 pesos which they can use for restarting their livelihood. Yun yung estimate, kasi ang estimate is that uh, 200,000 yung population. So at 80 pesos, that's 16 million. But uh, that figure may change because uh, as of today, Merong mga ibang farm, or, uh, farm owners who have uh, expressed uh, the desire uh, to offer their farms for voluntary culling. Uh, dahil gusto na rin ng uh, masiguro at makatulong sa kobyerno. Sir, sa 7 kilometer, 52 million na kailangan? Yes, 52. No, no, we could, we could provide more than that. No? Uh, I am not concerned with the amount here. I am concerned with containing the virus. Meanwhile, the DA ordered the Bureau of Animal Industry to conduct random tests on all poultry farms in the entire province to determine if there are other areas affected by the bird flu. This is also following reports of chicken deaths out of the quarantine area and the 7-kilometer radius controlled area. Secretary Pinol also ordered the Bureau of Animal Industry to burn all the culled chicken. Uh, we have to allow the incineration of uh, some of the fowls that will be culled simply because some of the areas where the farms are located are uh, in uh, areas uh, that are soggy. For now, more than 50,000 chickens have already been killed in Pampanga while authorities target to finish the culling of infected chicken on Thursday. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines.
In other news, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, insists that the one-month suspension it imposed against the operation of Uber remains effective amid the firm's filing for a motion for reconsideration to appeal the decision of the agency. Bernard Dadis explains why. Uber has once again activated its online booking system after it submitted a motion for reconsideration for the one-month suspension imposed on its operation by the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB. However, the LTFRB insists the suspension order against Uber remains effective and that its apprehension of Uber drivers will continue. The agency explains they will still have to study the motion filed by Uber. While we are uh, on the process of treating the MR, the order stands. So meaning, manguhuli po tayo? Yes. The agency explains they have to discipline and impose penalties on Uber after they found out that it still accredits and activates new applications of TNBS amid the suspension order that LTFRB issued last July 26. The LTFRB explained they are not making the lives of the drivers and passengers of Uber difficult. Ang gusto lang ko talaga namin, hahanap kami ng TNC na pwede namin ibigay sa mga TNBS na hindi ilalagay sa alanganin ng mga TNBS that they will look after the welfare of the TNBS and not only solely for their pockets. Some drivers of Uber complain against the suspension. Gutom dahil dito lang umaasa yung pamilya, nag-resign sa trabaho para dito. Siyempre, nalungkot po kasi napakaganda po nang kita po sa Uber at saka maayos na trabaho naman. No? Walang, walang boss po o ano. Sari hawak po namin oras namin, ganoon po. Sana po maintindihan po ng LTFRB. Meanwhile, the demand of passengers of Grab increased after Uber's operation was suspended. And because of the high demand, Grab automatically enforced a surge pricing system, meaning the fare has increased by 20 pesos to 50 pesos. What happens now is, kung dati nagsusurge lang siya, during peak hours, there might be more times during the day na na hit yung surge algorithm uh, at nag adjust yung prices. We request for, from our technical team to adjust the algorithm. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. In connection to that report, just around 6 in the evening today, the LTFRB has decided to deny the motion for reconsideration filed by Uber Systems Corporation, which further supports that the suspension order against Uber's operation and booking of passengers remains in effect. Meanwhile, for its part, Malacanang says it supports the suspension order imposed by LTFRB against Uber because the board is mandated to implement regulations concerning public transport. It understands the situation and therefore will uh, support LTFRB. The issue here is striking a balance between innovation and laws and regulations that Land Transportation and Franchising Board has to implement as part of its administrative function in regulating common carriers. Malacanang advises Uber to adhere with the regulations being enforced by LTFRB in order for the sanction to be lifted soon. The Light Rail Manila Corporation submits its proposal to the government to grant them the operation to the Metro or of the Metro Rail Transit or MRT3 or MRT Line 3. Victor Cosare will tell us why. Unlike the LRT2 and MRT3 that are managed by the government, LRT Line 1 is being operated by a private company, the Light Rail Manila Corporation or LRMC. According to LRMC President and CEO Rogelio Singson, the prevailing system in the government is one of the causes of the problems in the trains that it manages. Pagdating sa gobyerno, ang maintenance napakahirap. Mm. Sira yung bumbilya, tatawag ka muna. Uh, auditor, sira yung bumbilya, pwede ko bang palitan? Pwede bang bumili? Eh kung wala yung auditor, di, hindi mo pwede... Mm -hmm. Masyadong ano, masyadong ma -ma 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 marami ang red tape. The rules of 
to government always end up with the lowest bidder. Wala pang value engineering yan. Yes, yes, yes. Wala pang <coughs> life cycle analysis yan. Correct, correct. Kung andin yung pinakamura, doon ka bumili. Kung hindi, makukulong ka pag pumunta ka sa iba. This prompted the LRMC to propose to the government to grant them the management of MRT3. In his interview in Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, Singson said that the LRMC has submitted their proposal to the government. Over the past few weeks, uh, nag-offer na yung shareholders ng LRMC to government. Okay. okay. To run? To run, operate MRT3. So we hope uh, that they will find it as a good solution to their mm. That the problem of MRT3 mm -hmm. take out the headache from government mm -hmm. because as gaya nang sabi ko pagdating sa gobyerno ang maintenance napakahirap we understand that the offer of the light rail manila corporation to operate MRT3 is subject to the review and evaluation of the department of transportation to date, the LRMC is conducting continuous improvements on LRT Line 1. Among the improvements is the shortened train arrival interval of 3 minutes as new coaches are now being used in its operation. Noon itake over namin 77 LRVs, yung cars. Mm -hmm. We have rehabilitated, upgraded, binago ng totally. Makikita nyo siguro yan pag pumunta kayo sa depot kung ano yung ginagawa doon. No? Mm -mm. From 77, now 104. In less than two years? In less than two years. Okay. Na rehabilit, napapatakbo namin yan. Furthermore, the Cavite extension of LRT1 is scheduled to start next year and will be operational in 2021. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The soon-to-be-constructed North Luzon Expressway Harbor Link Segment 10 is expected to make travel faster from the port of Manila to northern Luzon. Nel Maribohok tells us why. The government is set to construct a new elevated expressway in part of northern Metro Manila that would connect NLEX and Road 20 in Manila. Earlier, the Department of Public Works and Highways and the North Luzon Expressway Corporation or NLEX led the groundbreaking ceremony in the NLEX Harbor Link Segment 10. The 2.6-kilometer highway will cover the MacArthur Highway in Valenzuela City, Governor Pascual Avenue in Malabon, and C3 Road in Caloocan. Through this, the travel time of vehicles carrying cargoes going to central and northern Luzon will become faster. The DPWH says the project would be a big help to ease the normally heavy flow of vehicles in Metro Manila. Malaki po ang mababawas sa congestion, sa, lalo na po sa EDSA dahil lahat po ng mga trucks na dum, usually dumadaan sa Metro Manila ay pwede nang dumiretso sa uh, uh, NLEX via the Harbor Lake. Upon completion, the travel time of motorists from port area to NLEX is expected to take only 10 minutes. The project might also help improve businesses and trade in the country. We expect uh, a significant contribution of the NLEX system to the Philippine economy. So, malaking kaluwagan po kung mai madala natin diretso sa R10 ang, ang NLEX because R10 has already been cleared and is a wide highway. As of today, DPWH is addressing the right-of-way issues in areas that would be covered by the project. The DPWH and NLEX Corporation target to complete the construction of the expressway by December 2018. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is confident that none of their men have sided with terrorists in Marawi City. The Department of Education vows to address the shortage of teachers and lack of classrooms across the country. The Saudi Arabian government sets to resume crackdown on undocumented expatriates following the end of its amnesty program. Y News will be right back. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV and Bureau of Customs Chief Nicanor Paildon 
engaged in a heated argument during today's resumption of the Senate probe on the billion peso worth of shabu from China. Nil Maribuhok will tell us why. BOC Commissioner Nicanor Faldon refuted allegations of his involvement in the shipment of shabu from China worth 6.4 billion pesos. The BOC chief blew tirades with Senator Antonio Trillanes IV during the hearing. Trillanes is the one implicating Faldon as the center of the controversy. Your Honor, please comply. Preposterous stories peddled by you are all over the news in the past few days. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not uh, want to further justify your please, uh, the, the baseless the, accusations by answering the, uh, your question, Your Honor. The resource person to act properly. Faldon admits to have discovered corruptions in BOC in his first months in the agency. That's why he insists of implementing reforms in the agency. I heard about Tara system, Your Honor, and this Tara system, you and everybody else here want to stop. During the hearing, the so-called Davao Group resurfaced as the one meddling in the transactions inside the BOC. According to customs broker Mark Taguba, he just overheard the name of Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte. Yung tita na ni Jack at Small, yun po ang nagbabanggit nung pangalan niya na I think kasi sabihin nila malakas ako kay malakas ako ngayon sa customs kasi dahil kay Vice Mayor ako. Trillanes pressed on the relationship between businessman Kenneth Dong and the vice mayor. Dong is said to be the middleman in the shipment of cargoes with billion pesos worth of shabu. Ina-admit mo na merong personal relationship ni Mr. Paulo Duterte. Is that correct? Opo, pero hindi okay. close. After the hearing, Dong was immediately arrested by NBI agents in accordance with the standing warrant of arrest due to a rape charge. We have a warrant against him for rape. The Blue Ribbon Committee will submit its preliminary report to the plenary, which states its recommendations as well as the results of its probe in the shipment of billion peso worth of shabu from China. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The National Bureau of Investigation files an importation of dangerous drugs complaint against Fidel Anoche D, the consignee of more than 600 kilograms of Shabu seized by the Bureau of Customs. A similar complaint was filed against Irene May Tatad, who was named as the importer of the said contraband, and a Chinese businessman named Chen Ju Long, alias Richard Tan and Richard Chen, the one suspected to be the real owner of the said cargo. Also named in the complaint were Manny Lee, a fixer, Kenneth Dong, a middleman, customs broker Mark Ruben Taguba and TJ Marciliana and two other Taiwanese nationals. Lee, Taguba and Marciliana are also charged with unauthorized practice of customs broker profession. Meanwhile, siblings Nova Princess and Reynaldo Parahinog Jr. were found negative of drug traces. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. There were no traces of methamphetamine and THC found on siblings Nova Princess and Reynaldo Parujinog Jr. The said chemical substances are among the ingredients in dangerous drugs such as marijuana and shabu. This is the result of the drug test initiated by the PNP Crime Lab to the Parujinog siblings through their urine samples taken on July 31. According to the PNP Crime Lab, one way to check if a person is under the influence of drug is through urine samples drawn up to three days after his suspected use. A urine sample yielding negative result is not a clear indication that such person is not a drug user. A PNP Crime Lab forensic chemist says it is possible that traces cannot be found in urine sample of those who suspend using drugs for a long period of time prior to the test. For first-time users, ma'am, usually um, two to three days. Pero pag heavy, moderate or heavy user, uh, depende na po siya sa metabolism din po ng tao, ma'am. Depende rin po anong drug din po yung kanyang initake at yung dose po kung gaano karami po yung kanyang tinake, ma'am. Other members of the Parohinog household who have died during the raid were not put through the drug tests as such are only applicable to those who are living. On the other hand, yielding negative result will not shield the Parohinogs from the cases filed against them.
yung uh, naging operation ng CIDG is the servicing of the warrant for F or any con of contraband that is indicated in the six search warrant. High-powered firearms, explosive, and guns. So, yung person, nung dalawang nag-negative, uh, hindi naman negative yung result of that uh, search warrant. Illegal possession of firearms, illegal possession of dangerous drugs, and illegal possession of explosives are just among the cases filed by the PNP against the Parujinog siblings. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Ozami City Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido believes that the murder and arbitrary detention complaint filed against him and three other police personnel were pure harassment and were masterminded by the Parohinogs. The police official is dubious as to why the case was filed in Manila and not in Ozami City or Cagayan de Oro. The complaint was filed by the relatives of one of the nine holdupers who were slain in the police operation in Barangay Cabinti and Balintawak in Ozami City on June 1. Six other suspects who are alleged members of the Martillo Gang were arrested in the operation. Yun ang katindihan na ho. Bakit hindi nilang pinapadala ni prosecutor sa Cagayan para ang taga-redyo na lang sa prosecutors ang mag sagawa ang mag-resolve kung may problema. Bakit nandito pa? Mga tanong yan, itanong nyo kay Secretary Aguirre yan kung pwede bakit papuntahin pa kami rito para lang mag- mag uh, receive ng affidavit of complaint. The Philippine National Police maintains there was no foul play in the death of over 20 drug pushers in a one-time, big-time operation today. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. 21 individuals were killed in today's one-time, big-time drug operation conducted by the Bulacan PNP. Police claims the suspects resisted arrest after noticing that the people they're transacting with were just poster buyers. Bulacan Provincial Director Police Senior Superintendent Romeo Karamat says they have planned the operation for one month. Of the nine towns raided by the police this morning, two suspected drug pushers were killed in Barangay Poblacion, Giginto, Bulacan. Two men in Barangay Loma de Gato, Marilao, Bulacan, while another one in Barangay Wawa in town of Balagtas. Casualties were also reported in the towns of San Jose del Monte, Mecawayan, Malolos, Baliwag, Norsagaray, San Miguel, Plaridel, San Rafael, and Santa Maria. Aside from the killed suspects, 94 drug personalities were also arrested, while 22 guns and 150 grams of suspected shabu were confiscated. The said one-time big-time drug operations is part of the campaign of the PNP against illegal drugs. Naisipan namin gumawa ng simultaneous uh, police operations para iparamdam at ipakita sa lahat ng mga drug forcers na patuloy na hinahamon itong kampanya natin sa illegal na droga. So parang ipakita namin sa kanila na ang Bulacan PPO ay hindi tumitigil at hindi titigil. Uh, sa kampanya laban sa droga, mas lalo namin papaigdi. The police target to conduct raids in 15 towns in Bulacan. Ay nagsimula exactly 12.01 ng madaling araw at magtatapos ito ng 12 midnight ngayong araw na ito. So yun po yung final kung ilan tali, kung ilan po yung mahuhuli namin. Uh, yan po yung uh, magiging resulta ng uh, one-day police operations namin. Bernard Dani's UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is confident that none of their men have sighted nor have been influenced by the mounted terrorist group in Marawi City. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The leadership of the Armed Forces of the Philippines assures that all its soldiers battling in the terrorist Maute group in Marawi City are true to their sworn duties. AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Restituto Padilla says all their men are true to their promises to perform their duties well and to show their loyalty to the country. All our personnel, all our soldiers, all our Marines on the ground are... Uh are there, they're all accounted for. We do not doubt any of their loyalties. And in fact, many of those who gave up their lives in Marawi from day one up to present and still fighting. The general also assures 
that none of their men went astray or betrayed the AFP. He says this is also true with the former members of the Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF who have now become soldiers. Our Muslim brothers and sisters also from the uh, MLLF who have been integrated and many communities who have decided to join uh, the armed forces and who have qualified to be soldiers, marines and uh, uh, other members of the armed services. So by and large there has not been any incident of that, of that nature. Padilla made a statement following the pronouncement of PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa claiming that there are some members of the police being investigated for suspicions of colluding with a Maute terrorist group. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some lawmakers criticized the Presidential Communications Operation Office for drawing flack recently after releasing false information in public via its Philippine news agency. Maki Libradilia explains why. Some lawmakers have questioned the errors committed by the state-run Philippine News Agency or PNEA recently. It can be recalled PNA posted a photo of Vietnam soldiers with a caption pertaining to soldiers battling terrorists in Marawi City. And just recently, the state-run news agency used a logo of a food company in the news about the Department of Labor and Employment or DOLE. The file retriever and the editor behind the erroneous information explained the reason behind the mistake. Nag-sort out ako sa Google dahil hindi ko, ay wala kaming logo ng, ng, ng dole. Sa akin pagtingin, nakala ko yung dole na yan, yan na yon labor, employment. Wala naman siya kapangyarihan na maglagay ng logo eh. Bakit uh, kailangan ilagay mo yung logo? Eh? Una-una, uh, hindi ka sigurado, hindi naman kasama ng trabaho mo siguro yon. First time po pong nagkaroon ng laps sa trabaho dahil lang po medyo nagkaroon nga po ng maraming confusion po sa sa system po sa bagong system nangangapa pa po kami hanggang ngayon eh kahiya-hiya talaga it reflects uh, on your leadership on the administration on the government and our country Secretary Martin Andanar admits the error and vows to tighten the screening of the news they would release on the PNA we uh, formed an editorial board which is the, the last gatekeeper of the stories uh, para hindi na po ito mangyari ulit. Meanwhile, the Congress orders the tightening of the accreditation process of bloggers attending national and presidential events. The lawmakers say the PCOO should create guidelines for those it will issue with accreditations and not to bloggers who write fake news. Some lawmakers also want to increase the budget of the PCOO next year for the improvement of the services of the news and communication agencies under it. Makili Bradilia, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Meanwhile, some former health officials and those in the health sector support the government in pushing for the raising of taxes for cigarettes. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The Syntax Coalition, which is composed of 60 member organizations, supports the proposal of the Department of Health to further raise the taxes on tobacco products. These include the imposition of additional taxes on sugars within beverages or SSB. The group says the money the DOH will earn from the taxes would greatly help in the implementation of the Universal Health Program. Gamitin ito para maging mas accessible ang healthy food sa mahihirap. Ang caloric insufficiency sa Pilipinas, ibig sabihin hindi sapat ang kinakain nilang pagkain, 69% sa 2015 survey. Lahat ng revenue sa SSB tax mapunta sa pagpapamura ng healthy food like fruits and vegetables. Aside from the additional income, it will also help lessen the number of cigarette smokers since its prices will increase. Former Health Secretaries Enrique Ona and Esperanza Cabral are also in favor of the said move. Ona says it will be great to intensify the collection of taxes so many can further benefit from the projects of the government. From something like 21 billion pesos, ang dati ho nating DOH budget in 2010 hanggang hong naging uh, 54, 80 plus and if you look at it, yun hong taas ng ating budget 
all came from the same accounts. Although the DOH is among the agencies with the biggest budget, health officials believe it still needs additional funds. Now we are uh, 104 billion DOH budget. We're number three in the ranking of government um, agencies. But still, we're saying that is not enough. So we welcome this proposal and we hope to discuss this with the Department of Finance and also with our legislators. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The National Youth Commission or NYC appeals to Congress to push with the Sangguniang Kabataan elections this year. Rosa Licos will tell us why. It has been years since the last elections of Sangguniang Kabataan was held. Likewise, it has been a long time since there was formal representation of youth in the barangay level. Now that the barangay elections will likely to be postponed anew, the National Youth Commission appeals to Congress to allow even the SK elections alone. Kung ayaw nila ituloy yung barangay, maintindihan namin. Pero sana yung SK ibigay na po sa amin. It's been years. And if ang fear nila ay mangyari, yung mga dating kinatatakutan nila mangyari, that's why there is a reform. Binago na po ang SK ngayon. Please give SK a chance. However, the local youth development offices will continue with their programs for the youth from provincial to municipal level. One of these programs is the Barangay Development on Youth. Whether SK elections will be postponed or not in October, NYC ensures there will be youth representations in Barangay level. Andun tayo sa kung ano man ang mangyari, the National Youth Commission will make sure that there will be youth representation kahit anong mangyari. If the Congress will approve the bill on postponement, it will be the second postponement of the local polls under the Duterte administration. President Duterte wants to ensure that no narco politicians will be elected. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. The Department of Education wants to address the current shortage of teachers and lack of additional classrooms across the country. Maki Libradilla tells us why. Based on the estimates of DepEd, the country still lacks 47,000 classrooms. This is one of the concerns the DepEd wants to address until 2018. The implement the DPWH is the new construction of school buildings and the replacement of old, dilapidated or condemned school buildings. DEPED also vows to address the lack of teachers across the country. The Education Department is in need of 81,000 teachers for kindergarten to senior high school. We are targeting to have 81,100 total teaching items. No? Creation of additional teaching positions. The said insufficiencies are among the concerns the DEPED will allocate money for in 2018. The proposed budget of DEPED for next year is 8% higher compared to its current budget this year. DEPED meanwhile appeals to soldiers to avoid making schools in Marawi City as their hideouts since schools should be considered safe zones. The call came amid the reported cases in Mindanao where schools are being made camps, barracks and detachment and supply depots of the military. Makili Bradilia, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some barangay leaders in Mindanao are in favor of delaying the barangay and SK elections in their region. Leslie Longbowen will tell us why. More than 200 barangay leaders of various barangays in Mindanao attend the public hearing and consultation held by the Commission on Elections in Davao City today. They are all in favor of postponing the local elections. Some of the barangay officials who expressed concern are those from the leagues of barangay from Caraga Region, Lanao del Norte, Davao del Norte, and the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or ARMM. The barangay leaders want to support the president in his campaign against illegal drugs. They call on the government to use the fund for the elections for the rehabilitation of Marawi City. Nasana po yung kondo na gagastusin sa mga election sa Marawi City, e baka po pwedeng i-realign na lang na idagdag sa pondo na gagamitin sa pag-rehabilitate ng Marawi. 
At sana po, matapos na po itong kaguluhan. Chairman Andres Bautista of Comelec says the polls might be postponed if the elections might not be peaceful in the area. Gagamitin nga namin yung kapangyarihan na binibigay sa komisyon sa Section 5 ng Omnibus Election Code na nagsasaad na kung hindi kakayaning magkakaroon ng isang maayos, malinis at mapayapang halalan sa isang lugar, pwedeng ipagpaliban ng komisyon on its own. For now, the commission is studying the position papers submitted by the barangay leaders in Mindanao if it is possible to postpone the polls there. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Undocumented Filipinos staying in Saudi Arabia will face stiffer penalties starting November. Bong Doquesa will tell us why. There is no extension on the amnesty for undocumented expatriates workers to leave the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia without penalty and fines. The four-month-long amnesty under the Nation Free of Violators campaign came to an end on July 24. For this reason, the Philippine Overseas Labor Office or Polo Riyadh expresses concern that still a large number of Filipino workers might suffer stiffer penalties once the Saudi government resumes its crackdown on illegal aliens this November. Definitely, there will be a crackdown. Ang uh, pagkasabi sa amin, uh, pero it's not unofficial, pero itong November daw, magkakaroon ng massive uh, crackdown. Since it started late March and was extended by one month, around 14,000 undocumented Filipinos were given travel documents based on the combined statistic from Polo Riyadh and Philippine Consulate in Jeddah. However, only about 9,000 asked for repatriation tickets. This means there are still around 4 to 5,000 Filipinos who are likely to be caught in the massive crackdown. But Polo and Consulate officials are hoping that many of those who did not report to their office could have left earlier and did not wait for repatriation. Meanwhile, according to the Office of the Migrant Workers Affairs, the Philippine government is continuously coordinating with the Saudi authorities regarding the welfare of the remaining Filipinos in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we are still trying to talk to our counterparts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are hoping that they'll be more liberal and they will show more compassion and mercy na may exit visa pa naman, lalo yung valid, may existing, sana makalabas. Uh, we are working very hard at it and we're hoping we, that the KSA government will grant our request. Uh, tinutulungan pa rin natin yan kung uh, para ma-extend yung visa nila. Saudi authorities warned those who will be caught illegally staying in the kingdom during the crackdown to face imprisonment of up to six months and fine of up to 650,000 pesos plus deportation. Bong Duquesa, UNTV News and Rescue, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Coming up on Y News. Locals and tourists in Guam are relieved after North Korea's Kim Jong-un holds off missile strike. Jared fish seized in the Gal Galapagos Island in Ecuador. And feline fans celebrate all things kitty at a cat convention in California, USA. More from Y News after this break. For the second time, the Quezon Provincial Government has accorded Hall of Fame or the Quezon Kasanga Award to the Members Church of God International. Leslie Longboan will tell us why. The local government of Quezon Province has accorded recognition to some groups and individuals helping to ensure the sufficient supply of blood for the sick in need of blood transfusion in the province. This 2017, MCGI was able to conduct blood donation drive twice with the help of the Quezon Provincial Blood Council, whereas the group accumulated about 150 blood bags. Yes, maraming maraming salamat kay Brother Eli Soriano at kay Brother Daniel Razon na every year hindi pwedeng hindi kikilalanin ang dating daan. Sana uh, sa mga darating pang panahon ay uh, manatili tayong magkakasama sa mga proyekto ko ito. Obligasyon po natin ng ating kapwa tao ay ating paggawa ng kabutihan. At ang advokasiyan ng samahan ito, ang paggawa ng pabuti ay hindi magbubungan ng masama. Meanwhile, some individuals in the province also received Galoner Award due to their regular donation of blood. One of them is Brian Ramos, a person with disability who was able to donate blood more than 30 times already. 
Maligaya naman kami kasi sa simpleng pagibigay namin ng dugo, ay ayan, bigyan kami ng parangal. The awarding is part of the week-long celebration of the Nugyugan Festival in the province of Quezon. Leslie Longboan, U1 TV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Wish Covery serves as a venue for some pre-qualifiers to discover their other abilities. Leslie Longboan is back to tell us why. Wish Covery is considered as a great opportunity for some singing hopefuls who want to prove something to themselves. Just like 19-year-old Rospel Gonzalez, Rospel stopped schooling to focus on theater acting. And as she joins Wish Covery, she wants to showcase to the world that she has more to offer other than theater performance. Meanwhile, 26-year-old e-services company manager Carl Ignacio tries to go on his own. Carl used to be a part of a boy band, but he believes that he can express himself more freely as a solo artist. No matter where you go, you know you're not alone. I'm only one, all the way. Pag nasa group ka kasi, kailangan mo ng sobrang habang pasensya. Hindi lahat ng gusto mo magagawa mo. Kasi kailangan mong itindihin ng group members. Unlike pag nag-solo ka, you have your own time, you have your, your uh, own song choice. Tapos bahala ka na kung paano maaraglihin. Rospel and Carl are among the Wishcovery pre-qualifiers who were hoping to be part of the 20 qualifiers of the online singing competition. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news August 15, 2017. Emmanuel Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news.